Hey students, welcome to mathcutserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over part two on how to factor cubes. All right, let's take a look at uh, the first example. Problem one, we are to factor uh, x to the sixth minus 64. Okay, so what we have here is a sixth degree binomial expression and we're to factor this expression completely. Now if we take a look at this, anytime you're asked or expected to factor any expression, you're to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor that can be extracted from the terms provided? And we can clearly see that there's no greatest common factor here. Next, let's see if we can classify this. We have squares, we have cubes, let's start with squares. Does this qualify as a difference of squares? Now let's write down a side note. This is connected to the notes that was provided in part one of this factorization of cube series. This has to do with squares. Now one thing I'd like you to note is that any variable raised to an even power is a square. Okay, any variable raised to an even power is a square. So think about even numbers as multiples of 2, okay? Any number that's divisible by 2 is considered even. So let's take a look at this. Based on what we just talked about, is x to the sixth a square? So we examine the power. The power is 6. Is 6 even or odd? 6 is clearly even because it's divisible by 2. Hence, x to the sixth is a square. Okay? How about 64? Is 64 a square? Can you think of a number multiplied by itself to yield 64? The answer is yes. 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, so now that we have a difference of squares, we can use the difference of squares formula to factor um, this difference of squares. So let's refresh our memories on what um, the difference of squares formula is. Okay, formula on the difference of squares. Difference of squares formula is as follows. A square minus B square is equal to A plus B times A minus B. Okay, so all you simply do is take the square root of the first and second term, express your roots as a sum and a difference. Now one thing I'd like you to note is that if you have a sum of squares, the expression is not factorable. It is prime. Now let's apply this formula to this scenario here. What we are simply going to do is take the square root of the first and second term and then express the roots as sum and differences. Okay, so the square root of x to the sixth is what? When you take the square root, you're dividing the power by three. Okay, so we're going to have x to the third and then the square root of 64 is 8, so x to the third plus 8 times x to the third minus 8. Applying the um, difference of squares factorization formula. Now let's take a look at what we have here. Are we done? Is this the factored state of this expression? This is not complete yet. This is just a partial factorization. Well, we, what I'm saying here is that we can still factor these two further. Examine the first binomial, cubic binomial here. This is a difference, is a sum of cubes. Uh, this is because we have two cubes, x to the third and eight is a cube because two to the third is eight and we have a plus. So this can be factored and this one can also be factored because it is a difference of cubes. Okay, so let's write down the formula for sum and difference of cubes. Formula for sum 
and difference of cubes. Now remember for squares you can only factor sums. I mean I'm sorry, you can only factor differences. But for um cubes you can factor sum and differences. You're not constrained by the operation. So if you have a to the third plus b to the third, we talked about the soap formula in part one of this um tutorial series. Remember soap same opposite always positive so for the sign the first sign is going to be the same as the original a square the next sign is going to be opposite that which is minus and then the last sign is always positive so this is a factorization of the sum of cubes difference of cubes we have the same as the first a minus b times a square the next sign is going to be opposite of this which is plus and the last sign is always positive okay so we're going to apply these two formulas in the factorization of these um, two quantities here so first we have the sum let's deal with that first okay all we need are just a and b and then we'll substitute it into this formula here and we'll have the factorization of this sum of cubes. Okay, a to the third is equal to x to the third, as we can see, and b to the third is equal to 8. So what's a and b here? All you simply do is take the cube root, okay? Take the cube root of both sides, and we can see that a is equal to x, and that's applicable to both quantities. If you take a look at the second equation that we have, we'll take the cube root of both sides, cube root, cube root, and we'll see that b is equal to 2 because the cube root of 8 is 2. Now let's rewrite the formulas here so we can substitute it without making mistakes. So the sum we have a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. When we plug it in, we're going to have um, a plus b is going to be x plus 2 times a squared is x squared minus ab as x times 2, which is 2x plus b squared, which is 2 squared, and that is 4. Now, let's look at the difference of cubes. We have a cubed minus b cubed. We just need a and b here. But a cube and b cube are the same as this right here. We just have to cube root them to find out what a and b are. So we already know what a and b are. So let's just write down the formula a minus b. This is for the difference of cubes. a cubed plus a b plus b square. There's no uh, cube here. That's supposed to be square. So let's fix that. A square plus AB plus B square. Okay. Now if we substitute the values of A and B into the formula for the difference of cubes. We're going to end up with X minus 2 times A square X square plus AB X times 2, which is 2X plus B square, which is 4. And there goes your final answer for the factorization of x to the sixth minus 64. Okay, so let's go ahead and box that result. All right, let's take a look at question number two. What if we were asked to factor the sixth degree trinomial x to the sixth plus 7x to the third minus 8 equals 0. As you can see here, we have a trinomial. So anytime you have a trinomial, you want to ask yourself, can I rewrite this as four terms so that I can factor by grouping? All right. So one strategy you can use to test that or achieve that goal is the x game. Okay, we're going to play the X game. 
You might recall AC goes on the top, B goes on the bottom. AC is uh, 1 times negative 8, which is negative 8, and B is 7. Now what two numbers multiply to give you negative 8 and add to give you 7? We can use um, 8 and negative 1. 8 minus 1 is 7 and 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. That works perfectly. So we're going to substitute 8 and negative 1 for 7. So we have x to the 6th plus 8x to the 3rd minus 1x to the 3rd minus 8. Now we have four terms. We can now factor by grouping. So we're going to place our partition down the center in front of that minus. From the first two, factor out the GCF, which is x to the third. Now here, when you're factoring out GCFs, a cool trick you can use is examine the powers of the variables. You always factor out the minimum of the two. So you have x to the sixth and x to the third. The minimum of the powers is x to the third and that's your GCF right there. Okay, so we have x to the third factored out. We'll be left with x to the third plus 8. To the right of the partition, um, always keep the sign, the middle sign, so we have minus. The GCF of 1x to the third and 8 is 1, so we will be factoring out negative 1. Don't forget, anytime you factor out a negative term, signs flip. So this will become a positive x to the third. We take out negative 1 from negative 8, you have plus 8 equals 0. Now let's freeze and do a real quick check to see if our factorization process is accurate so far. Examine the quantities in the parentheses. If they are identical, then you're looking good. That is the case here, the quantities are identical, so that means we're on the right track. Let's go ahead and factor out these two identical quantities, x to the third plus 8. What we will have left are the outsiders, x to the third and minus 1. We're going to group them together, x to the third minus 1 equals 0. The question now is, are we done? The answer is no. We have a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. Again, so we're going to use both formulas, all right? So what we have is a cubed plus b cubed and a cubed minus b cubed. Let's figure out what a and b are for both cases. Here we have a cubed plus b cubed. And then over here we have a cubed minus b cubed. So for the first set, a cubed is equal to x to the third. So what is a? You simply take the cube root of both sides of the equation, which yields a is equal to x. Now we know that b cubed, the second term, is equal to 8. So what we're going to do now is take the cube root of both sides, and we'll have b is equal to the cube root of 8, which is 2. Okay, now we can use the sum formula, the sum of cubes formula to factor the first quantity. Okay, the sum of cubes formula is a plus b, remember soap, same, the next one, a square opposite, minus a, b, and the last is always positive, just like that. So if we substitute the values of a and b into this formula here for the sum of cubes we have x plus 2 times a square which is x square minus a b which is 2x plus b square which is 4. This is the factorization of x to the third plus 8. Now let's shift our attention to x to the third minus 3. So for that one let me change the color, let's make it blue. So we have 
x to the, I mean a to the third minus b to the third. So uh, for this one, let's partition it here so we don't get confused. a to the third is equal to x to the third and we can easily see that um, if we take the cube root of both sides that isolates a which is x just like this one right here. How about b though? b to the third is equal to 1 so we take the cube root of both sides and we have the value of b as 1 because the cube root of 1 is 1. Now let's write down the formula for the difference of cubes. All right, remember the soap um, mnemonic device. You have a soap same, so a minus b, and then o for opposite, a square opposite of minus is plus, a b, and the last sign is what? Always positive. Okay, so let's plug in the values of a and b for the second um, cubic binomial into this formula here. So we're going to have a minus b, which is x minus 1, times a square, x square, plus a b, x times 1, which is just x, plus b square, which is 1 square, which is just 1. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the factored state of the original polynomial equation that we have, okay? So there is your final answer. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of polynomial factorization, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments, just place it in the comments section below and we'll be more than glad to um, respond to your concerns. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.